Hi everyone, it's Eric Vanderwall here for Drupal for Anyone. We've had a little request, so we're going to go through a tutorial for that request. And what it is is to build a quick and easy blog for Drupal 7. So this is an introduction to working with custom content types. In order to make a custom blog in Drupal 7, we're going to need two different parts. The first is the blog page itself so this will come from a custom content type and in our blog we want it to have a title we want it to have a body we need some tags and we would like to have an image for our blog the next thing we need is actually a list of our blog pages if we have a blog but without any lists then how are our users going to find it so in order to build that list we're going to use the views module and what we're looking to do is to have about 10 blog entries per page we want it to show up on our menu, of course, and our content is going to be a teaser or a summary of our content. If you don't know what that means, you'll find out if you keep watching, and we'll go over that a little bit more. In order to make this happen, the modules that are absolutely necessary is Drupal 7's core, which of course you should already have installed. The next thing we're going to need is views, and there's a few views dependencies, specifically C tools, and we'll go through that as we install the modules. There's a couple optional modules. If you're already running Drupal 7, you probably already have Path Auto running. An optional module, which we may not cover in this lesson, is Real Name, and this will replace your username with your real name on your blog, which is a nice little feature. And we're also going to use a CSS injector in this tutorial. You could open up your site by FTP and edit your CSS files directly on your theme. However, for a lot of people who are new to Drupal or new to technology, they may, that might not be such a simple task for them. So we can just use the CSS injector to throw a little bit of CSS up there. Now, one last thing before we get started regarding this CSS. If you don't know any CSS, but you want to position your image the same way as I do in this tutorial, please name your fields the same as mine. So I'm letting you know that right off the bat from the beginning. Please name your fields the same as mine. Specifically, your image field should have the same name as mine. You can copy the CSS from this little tutorial here from our website, which is www.drupal4anyone.com. And as well, I'm just going to show it to you here on screen, and we will look at that again when we place it. So let's start the tutorial. Now, as per usual, I'm going to actually use my own site to build and demonstrate what we're going to do in this tutorial. You may be running a different theme than me, that's fine, so this is just the theme that I've installed. It shouldn't really make that much of a difference for this tutorial. Now, the other thing you might notice is I have the administration menu module installed. It gives me this nice little administration menu at the top. Um, if you go to our site, you can see how to install that. Using this tutorial here, quick, quick cache clearing using the administration module. So just follow that if you want to learn how to install the administration menu module. Okay, so let's get started. We're just going to choose under structure, content types, add content type. Now the reason we're doing this is although I already have some different types of content here, we've got an article, a basic page, course, whatever. We want to create a new content type for the blog specifically. So I'm just going to name this blog entry. You could name it blog post blog entry. I don't want to name it blog for myself. I find that confusing because I consider the blog the list of all the entries. So my description is going to be create a new blog entry. There we go. And I like to give my title a little more description here, so I'm just going to call this a blog title. You can title your title whatever you want it to be, it's still always going to be a title. Personally, I don't like previewing my content before I submit it, so I'm just going to disable that. You can leave this optional or set it to required and force people to preview the content before it's submitted. Now, looking at the publishing options, I don't want my blog to be published to the front page automatically of my website. So I'm just going to disable this. But I do want it to be published when I submit it. So we're going to leave that there. Under your display settings, we have the option to display the author and the date information. I do in fact want the author to be displayed on my blog 
Normally for other pages on my website, I don't want the author and the date to be displayed, but since blogs are time and people specific, I'm going to leave that set to open. Now we have the comment settings. By default, commenting is open on your new content types. I'm going to close it. I'm not looking for any comments on my blog specifically. Um, if you are, then you can go ahead and leave this open and people can comment on your blog posts. But if you do do that, don't forget to set up some type of CAPTCHA or filter in order to do that. So I'm going to choose Closed. Menu Settings. Now, you might think you want to have the menu settings available for this content type because you think, yes, I want my blog in the menu. But in fact, I don't want it set here because I don't want just one blog entry to show up in my menu. I want a whole list of blog entries. So I'm going to disable this. I don't want people accidentally adding this single one blog entry into the menu system. And then I'm just going to save this content type. Now, as we can see, we have a new content type that's been added called blog entry. And under the description it says, create a new blog entry. What we want to do next is manage the fields. When we create a new content type, it's going to give us automatically a title, and it's going to automatically give us a body and a path. So we have a couple extra things here um, because we're using path auto and the XML sitemap module, so these are added extra. You may not have these, and that's fine. So we've got our title our body and our URL settings. So we want more than this. I'm just going to save this. We want more. We want an image and we want some tags and things like that as well. So let's first set up our image. So I'm going to choose to add a new field and I want to call this field um, blog image. So if you want to use my CSS that I'm providing in the example here to position the image in your blog, make sure that you call your blog image blog image, exactly the same as mine. So it should be field blog image. So the field type we want here is image because we want to add an image to this content type. And automatically the widget selected is image here, so no problem. We'll save that. And then we're going to get a couple more setting options here. So I want to keep these images in my public file system. These are not private images. These are images I want everyone to see. So I'm just going to save the default settings here. The next thing is, is I can set a label for this blog image. In fact, I'm just going to leave the label as a default because in the end I'm going to hide it. I don't want anyone to see any label for this. I'm not going to make this a required field. I want it to be optional. People can optionally add images to the blog. Um, we can set some help text like, okay. <clears throat> I'm also going to set a file directory. I want this to go to a specific file on my server so they don't get all messed up with lots of other pictures. So if I need to fix something later, I know where to find everything. So I'm just going to put it into a directory called blog image. And actually Drupal will create this file directory for you automatically, so there's no problems here. We can also set a maximum size for this image or a minimum size. I'm going to set a minimum size. I don't want people to upload very tiny images and hope that they're going to display well on the blog because we know that's just not going to work that way. So I am going to set, um, for example, the suggested example here, which is 640 by 480. So you don't need to do this if you don't want to, but I, I don't like very tiny images on my blog. I'm also going to enable the alt field. The alt field will allow me to put in some alt text. We want to do this for SEO reasons. Now I only want one blog image. I don't want unlimited. This is going to change our formatting a bit, so let's just stick with one for now. So save that when you're done. The next thing we're going to do is set up some tags, and I'm going to open a new tab to do this. So I'm going to go Structure, Taxonomy, and I want to add a vocabulary. I'm just going to open mine in a new tab. So I'm going to set up a new taxonomy here. I'm going to call this 
log tags and save that and that's all I need to do so now I have a new vocabulary name called blog tags so let's go back to our blog entry and let's add it in here okay so now we have some taxonomy but we need to make sure that our blog references that taxonomy how do we get those tags into our blog itself so to do that we need to create another field here and we're gonna call this field blog tags as well you don't have to call it the same thing you can call it whatever you want now the field type is going to be a term reference because we want to reference those taxonomy terms and I'm just gonna go with the default here as far as the widget goes which is auto complete term widget and let's save this now we can choose which vocabulary we're referencing so I just created this one called blog tags so I want it to reference blog tags so we'll save it now under the help text I'm gonna say and again I don't want to set these as required but you could make it required the number of blog tags to be used I don't want it to be one I'm gonna set unlimited I want people to be able to make as many tags as they want then we're just gonna save this now that's pretty much it we've got the body we've got the title we've got the image and the tags so I'm just gonna rearrange this a little bit so it displays differently when we edit it I'm just gonna move the image up to the top and move the tags up there so now I've got title tags image body you don't have to do this save so now let's let's give it a run let's test it out and see how this looks so we're gonna go content add content and now we have blog entry so just like we created we have a blog title we have blog tags a blog image and a body so I'm just gonna call this I'll fill it out and then we'll jump past that okay so now I have filled it out I've given it a title I've given it some different blog tags here I've created or uploaded an image filled out the alternative text and filled in the body with some lorem ipsum here okay so the, the next thing we're going to do is just save this and it's going to come out like this we've got all of our text here we've got our blog image way down here that's real ugly and at the bottom I've got my tags so what I want to do is adjust this so that it looks better now depending on your theme you may have a manage display tab right here or you might need to go to structure content types and choose blog entry from here you can choose manage display now we just want to change a couple of things here quickly the first thing is is that we want the image above the body of text and we want our blog tags even above that so I'm just gonna drag and drop them and then click Save now if we go back to our content and see how it looks we can see that in fact okay we have our blog tags at the top we have our blog image here and then we have our text so that's great we're starting to get closer so let's go back to the manage display page the next thing we want to do is get rid of the labels above things so not above not inline but hidden hidden so again I save this go back to the blog post and refresh it and now we can see that the labels are gone so that's good but actually I think I want for my tags an inline label because otherwise they're just sitting there and people are not really sure what they are so let's jump back say tags inline save that jump back and refresh great so now we have blog tags and the label and we have the blog tags right next to it the next thing we need to do is deal with this image the image is huge and ugly and that's not how we want it to be so back on the manage display page we're gonna change the formatting of this image so right now it's set to original image if I click this gear I can change the formatting of the image automatically 
So I'm going to change the image style to, let's say, let's try 220 by 220. These are the default ones that are straight out of Drupal. We also want the image to link to nothing because we're already on the page. You could have it link to the actual file though so people could see the image file, but I don't want to do that. Let's update, save, go back to the blog post and refresh it. And there we go. So now we have the image the right size. So that's good for us. Now, so as you notice, it's left justified. So it's sitting right flush to the left side of the page. In some cases, this might be fine. In other cases, this is going to give us sort of an ugly blog post. Now, in order to change this, we are going to need to edit the CSS of this. And if you're familiar with CSS, there shouldn't be a problem for you. If you're not familiar with CSS, that's okay. You can use the example code that I have created for you. Now, in order to get the CSS on our site, we could either access it through the FTP or we can use a module called CSS Injector. And you can download it here and add it to your site. This is a great module. Okay, I'm going to jump back to my site and I've already got CSS injector installed so it's under configuration development and CSS injector so once you're in CSS injector you can add your CSS directly here instead of going through your FTP so I'm going to create a new rule and I'm going to call this blog posts and so here I can put the CSS for my blog post. I could call this whatever, but I'm just going to call it blog post so I know what it is. So I previously wrote out the CSS I'm going to use, so I'm just going to copy and paste it in here. So this is the CSS, and I'm going to explain this to you very quickly what it is. So in this CSS we have the name field name because we're selecting a field, and the field's name is blog image. So again, if you called yours blog image, then this is going to work for you. Now, we specifically, of this blog image, we want to select the field item. If we don't select the field item specifically, the CSS is going to apply to this field even when you're editing it, not just when you're displaying it. So we just want to target the display of this image, not the editing of the image. Now what I'm going to do is float the image to the right side. I'm going to add a little bit of padding on the bottom and a little bit of padding on the left so it's not flush against the text. So I'm just going to save this. And now we've got it here. Let's go back to our post and refresh this. And once this is refreshed, you can see now that the image has moved over to the right hand side. So there we go, we've got our very first blog post created. No problem. So in part two of this, we're going to look how to create a list of blog posts, so not just one page by one page, which isn't going to really help us much, but to have a full list.